How does evolution explain uh, or account for sin? And how does how does it explain why Christ had to go to the cross? First of all, Genesis 1, verse 20 and 24 says God turned over the creating of life to nature. Uh, he says, let the waters bring forth the moving creature that has life. Let the earth bring forth the living creature. And so uh, water and earth basically uh, equals nature. So God is working through nature to create life. And as far as the uh, creating of variety of life, the great abundance of life, the great uh, um, number of species, <clears throat> that comes from uh, God um, creating um, parenthood. He says, let the creatures uh, reproduce after their own kind. This ability to reproduce, uh, this is God's way of um, giving his creatures, the work of doing the creating. He's the creator, but he has his own creatures do the creating. So this is his modus operandi. And um, through creating after their own kind, they also, as a byproduct, they create new creatures, later creatures, higher creatures. The first creatures are the low creatures, and they create the higher creatures and so on. Uh, the fish produce the amphibians, the first amphibians, and the amphibians produce the first reptiles, and, the f and they go on uh, uh, to produce the first mammals. And as far as man goes, um, it says that God created, okay, the, the mammals, God created different kinds of mammals, the beasts of the fields, uh, the carnivorous creatures and the creeping things. The creeping things would include the tree shrews that scientists tell us produced the uh, first, uh, you know, lemurs or the ancestors of the monkeys, and they produced the monkeys. The monkeys produced the apes, and God stepped in and created man from those guys. This is in Genesis 1. Forget Adam and Eve. That's in Genesis 2 and 3. Uh, the, Genesis 2 says Adam was the first farmer. So he belongs uh, at around uh, 10,000 B.C. And th instead of thinking of him as the first man, think of him as man, as the first farmer. Man at the time of the agricultural revolution. Now we go back to the first man, which would be um, millions of years ago. Uh, and, um, well, okay, they say uh, the uh, first modern man came into existence something like 300,000 years ago. But the fall of man, according to uh, Genesis uh, 2 and 3, came uh, much later than that. Apparently, man was uh, doing pretty well until the agricultural revolution, when man uh, did, no, did not have to uh, um, uh, pick fruit and uh, hunt. He could live in, in, in towns, and uh, this led to um, uh, sin, <laughs> the fall. Now, how did man having the brains of a fish, uh, brain, the brain stem is actually, the, the brain stem in, in our brain is actually all the brain that a fish has. We have the brain of a fish. We have the brain of amphibian and reptile. And then we have the brain of a mammal on top of that. And finally, we have the part of the brain which is unique to man. Now, what happens in sin uh, the animal nature of man, which man inherited from the animals, um, is at war with uh, the higher brain that man has.
the higher nature that man has. And uh, this would be what uh, Paul is talking about, Paul the Apostle, when he says uh, the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And so evolution accounts for this because evolution accounts for man having the brains of the different uh, uh, life forms that preceded man. Carl Sagan in uh, the TV show and also the book uh, named uh, um, Cosmos. Cosmos. Uh, he uh, goes into the the uh, into this very well. It's like a city. How the different parts of a city, different uh, areas of a city, um, come into being. God arranged for the sex urge in animals to be so strong. Uh, why? Because uh, otherwise they would not uh, reproduce. Uh, the animals that did not have a strong sex urge, they, they died off. Now we inherited this um, over, overly strong sex urge. And so this um, uh, limits man's free will. And the other animal um, urges also limit man's free will. And so man uh, has a, 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 a proclivity to sin. When Paul says that sin comes from Adam, uh, this is a shadow of the truth rather than the truth itself. Like Paul says, the law of Moses contains a shadow of the truth. Well, same thing with the New Testament. Now, um, it's not so much that sin begins with Adam. Sin begins with our ancestors. Adam is our ancestor, so to speak. And so that's what Paul is, is uh, uh, saying, that it, sin comes from our ancestors. And actually, we have to go beyond, go back beyond Adam to the animals. The animals are where uh, sin comes from. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it goes into the closeness of man uh, with the beast. He says, man uh, is like the beast. And uh, he definitely is correct in the sense of origin. But how does uh, God uh, um, foisting this, um, this uh, animal nature on man or allowing an this animal nature in man to be so strong, how does that explain uh, Christ going to the cross? Well, Christ had the victory over his animal nature in that he did not sin even uh, when uh, death uh, faced him, even when torture and pain faced him. He did not run in the Garden of Gethsemane. He could have run. He did not have to uh, stand there and let uh, uh, Judas and the um, others arrest him and, and, uh, and uh, crucify him. Uh, he had the victory over sin and by him going to the cross uh, that cemented that victory like clay goes into the kiln. Uh, clay that is, goes through the fire cannot be shaped into something else. A pot remains a pot. And Christ's nature, we take on Christ's nature through conversion and uh, through communion and um, through the Eucharist, so to speak. As we imitate Christ, follow in his footsteps, take up our cross, we too have the victory over the animal nature. Christ said we become equal to the angels after death. And that can happen after death in this life. In other words, as we die to self, we, be, we come, become like the angels uh, in this life, not just when, after we die uh, physically. After we, when we die um, in this life, when our sinful nature dies, we take on the angelic nature. I say in Luke 20, verse 35 through 37. Uh, this particular version 
is, uh, Christ says we become equal to the angels. Now in the other Gospels, it says we become like the angels. So Luke 20 is much more strong. Uh, there are two or three sentences in Luke that are not included in the other versions. Christ had to go to the cross because if he did not go to the cross, he would be committing sin. In the book of James, it says, to know to do good and to not do it is sin. If Christ could have gone to the cross, but he, if he avoided the cross, that would be sin, and God cannot sin. And if he did sin, he would be uh, less than God, and God would turn, turn into the devil. Look up the transcript in the description box. I'm going to try to uh, give a, um, a good uh, full summary.